All right, so here we go for our final post-game show for the regular season, 2023 Rutgers football, ending their season on a losing streak again. But this time, Richie, uh, they will be going to a bowl game, so they have that, and they've had that in their back pocket for the past uh, several weeks, but it uh, doesn't make these losses feel any better. Yeah, no, this was... uh... (laughs) It's a shit show. This was a bad one. This was a really bad game. The first three, what? First three or four drives, um, Maryland just ran down the field with ease. Um, I shouldn't say run. They actually passed down the field with ease. But, um, yeah, they just they couldn't stop them at all. And I think I said it before this season, Talia is one of the better quarterbacks in the country. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the Big Ten. Obviously, he's the Big Ten all-time passing leader now, if, if you count that record or not, because that fifth year is kind of weird. But, Regardless, um, their offense is just – it's too good. And Rutgers' defense, while it's been good this year, it hasn't been – they haven't – they weren't able to do anything today. And their offense is just so stagnant that they can't get anything going, forcing the defense to play just about every snap. So, it is, ugly one. It is so obvious when you watch Talia play and then watch Wimsat play. It, it, mm. you, know, you, you do wonder – what goes through the mind of, of Shiano when, when he sees it like right in front of his eyes. And it's like Rutgers is just a more, is a much better coach team. I believe they have more talent on their team, but mm-hmm. that just shows you the big difference in the, in the sport of football. When you have the superior quarterback by like that big of a margin, this is the result. Yeah. It, it's a shame too, because Kyle Mananga had a hell of a game. And they just couldn't do anything in the past game. And that basically just made it a non-existent offense for the most part. Like, uh, it's just, it's really defeating. It's, I guess not even, it's, it's more so defeating because it's a four, a four game losing streak on top of it, but to get blown out by a team that's a middling of the pack, big 10 team, it's just yeah. really not a good look. And I've saw people on Twitter and social media say like, Hey, once Tally is gone they're they're going to take a big step back and then Rutgers will be more competitive <laughs> against them. And it's like, come oh, on, like that's, what, what, what is that? Like, stop feeding into that. Like, it, it's a bad loss. Like, they should have been better, and they, they just they looked like they weren't prepared and they weren't ready today. Yeah, that's the thing. You hit it on the head early on. It wasn't just the fact that, I mean, obviously we know and we knew, we knew what to expect, but it, it was like the, it's like the players just didn't seem like they were into it. Um, I don't know. It, I mean, we, they gave up the first touchdown drive, which, okay, we've seen that before. So mm-hmm. that wasn't a big surprise. But it, after that, it just seemed like they the missed tackles and the big plays, the gaps that were open. And, yeah, it just seemed like they were completely just not focused and, and almost just like they it, give them credit for responding. But as soon as the clock yeah. ran out in the first half, it's like all of that momentum was just gone. And then they couldn't then- pick it back up again. Yeah, and and like I said, they get the ball in their first drive, and it's like three yard run, ten yard run, five yard run. Kyle Manangai looks like his old self again. He looks like he's gonna break that thousand yard mark, and then I think he did on the, the yeah, very next did. drive. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but then all of a sudden, like Wimsat has like a wide open Sean Bauman, wide open, and he just sails it. And it's like well, this is the first pass of the game. There's no pressure. What what are, what are you doing? And then I, I think I forget what the next pass was, but I think it was like a small completion or incompletion or whatever. And then they got a turnover on downs that drive. And then Maryland comes down again and scores. Then Rutgers gets a field goal. Then Maryland comes down again and scores. And then it's punt. And then Maryland comes down again and scores. It's and it's ridiculous. like, it's like, oh my God. And like the defense was non existent. Like you said, they fought back. So I do give them some credit. And it seemed like they had some life going into halftime. It seemed like they even had some life in the third quarter. But then it just fell apart again, and it was just defeat, defeat, defeat. And you can't give up 21 in the first quarter, and you can't give up 28 in the first four drives of the opposing team's uh, offense. It's just you're going to lose 99% of games that way. Yep, yep. And uh, and 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 you talked about it. Like if we uh, look at how this game went, and again, so Maryland scores to, to, to go up 7-0. So when we mm-hmm. got the ball back, and it was – uh, second down, so he overthrows the tight end, which would have made it easy first down. And then uh, we had to go for it on fourth and two because of that. Yeah. And then Wimsat, I, I don't understand Wimsat running the ball on fourth and two when you have Manunkai. I, I don't understand that because that to me looked like that yeah. was the designed play was we're mm-hmm. going to run with Wimsat. We've seen it 
have success before. It's not like it hasn't had some success. So I don't want to second guess the play calling, but it just still doesn't make sense why you it's Wimzad is not a 230 pound quarterback when he has to try to make room or he has to pull the pile. It's just not going to happen. No, I, I agree with you. And I thought it was weird because, like, like I said before, this drive started with a three, ten, and four yard run from an on guy. If he's running that good on third and long, if you're going to do the stupid run play, which I think third and long, like, I mean, sometimes you have to do a run play, but other times it's like, come on, dude, like it's third and long. You got to be able to pass the ball a little bit. Um, but regardless, then it goes to fourth and two. And it's like, what what are you doing? It's Kyle Manungai. The guy literally is breaking tackles left and right every Stop, other he's the game. He's player of your team. Yeah, he is your offense, to be honest. Like, And you're going to run with Wimsett? Like, it's like, come on. And then he gets stuffed and then turnover, and it's like, oh, here we go again. And then they just drive down the field with ease again. Yeah, there was uh, – it was funny. It was kind of – let's see. Longer beam gets beat for the touchdown. And, again, these are players that have had good seasons. So longer beam gets beat for the touchdown. Mm-hmm. And then I thought it was kind of interesting and funny maybe in a not-so-funny way when they hit that 50-yard pass after it was 7 nothing, and um, Igbenosum got beat. Because they were showing, did you notice they're showing the graph of the impact players? Yeah. And one of the players was Ibn Osum. And then just the next play. Now, look, I don't know if it's exactly his man, but it looked like it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, that was a, a, that pass that went for, uh, went, you know, nice little 10 yard pass and he, and he took it the distance, almost the mm-hmm. distance. Um, but those are, again, good players getting beat. Um, and then it's just not just we can go over this, but the fact that. The, this game was just like uh, it, it just reminded us the whole season of how many inconsistent off throws Wims had had. It's like he did it all in one game. Mm-hmm. His pass accuracy in this game was as bad as we've ever seen it. And it came the week before a week after he played one of the best games that he's played. Yeah, I, the announcers made sure to bring it up every every other minute. It was like, well, Greg Giano just said last week was his best game ever as a quarterback passing the ball, and it's like, yeah, and then what do you go, 13 of 33? 13 like, of 34. 34, even worse. That is that is just bad. But going back to the Igmanosin thing, um, he's had struggles all year, long, all year long. He's in that weird like slot corner role, and – he just he's not great in coverage. He's almost growing too much to the point where he's kind of like a linebacker build, but I don't know if he's big enough yet to play that linebacker role. And I don't know if he can play that linebacker role. I don't know if he'd be good enough because they do have some pretty damn good linebackers. But um yeah, going back to the Wimsett thing, it's just he's t- someone asked me on uh what was it? Uh Thanksgiving when we posted uh, a couple articles and someone's like, You think he'll break uh get past that fifty percent completion mark this year? And I'm like, he's forty nine point like two or something. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty confident this weekend against Maryland. They have a bad defense, too, on top of it. So I maybe not bad, but they're not great either. Um, so, yeah, you know what? I think he'll get above 50%. And then I watched this today, and I'm like, you know what? I, I just got to keep my mouth shut sometimes. Yeah. How can you uh, – to, to try to say something positive or to put yourself out there for Gavin yeah. Wimsat is just a bad, bad move. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was rough. And, um, um, and then we saw, by the way, when it was 14 nothing. Now, I don't know whose fault this is, but once again, did you notice that Wimsat goes to with less than five seconds again before the play is going to run out? Time is going to run. Mm-hmm. He, he runs to the line of scrimmage to change his play. And then she yeah. was pissed off. And it's like, well, who's he pissed off at? Because it looked like he was pissed off at Wimsat. So was that Wimsat's fault or is the play coming in late? So it's just very weird. I don't know. That's just, come on. You, you sit there for 30 seconds sometimes with this offense mm-hmm. and you can't get the playoff in time. Come on. Yeah, I mean that that's probably Kirk's call if I had to guess, probably making a call different. They saw something up in the box and said, like, oh shit, like call down there, like tell I think he's uh communicating with Dave Brock on the sideline, who's the former OC as well, and telling, Hey, all right, change the play. And then they obviously re- relay it to Gavin, but whatever, blah, blah, blah. So but to do it with that little much of time left on the clock is just it's it's risky, but I, I don't I don't really get too mad about that. It's just the play calling today was just very simplified again. Yeah. And I thought the most interesting thing was the Kirk Soraka actually talked to the announcers and you heard Matt Millen say this a couple of times. He goes, in order to master Kirk's playbook. Yeah. It takes three years. I think he said for the guys to fully master it. And I was like, all right, well, number one, oh, that's, that's not going to happen. And, yeah. if, and if we're going to do the math, technically, I guess 
are you trying to bank on Gavin's senior year? And you're just yeah. like, well, <laughs> cause that would be three years that because one and then two would be a junior next year and senior year of the year after. So I was just like three years, like, all right, that's, that's not going to fly too far. Um, especially when you're, you might lose guys. Like you lose a Manung guy to the NFL this year. And it's like, all right, well, <laughs> shit is, is Sam Brown healthy enough to take that, uh, take the carry load over. I don't think so right now. Not the way he's looked this year. Hopefully yeah. there's that one year injury deal and he'll be better next year. Uh, they've mm -hmm. got depth. So that'll come into play. But you also have to hope that, I mean, again, you, and you guys have talked about this before, like, when you're looking at receivers, which receivers, especially transfers, forget transfers, mm -hmm. you can recruit receivers because they know Wimsat won't be here much longer. But it's hard to bring in transfer receivers if you need any because why would they want to come play for Rutgers with Gavin Wimsat a quarterback? I mean, why? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you completely. You watch a guy, if you look at the stats and you go into spring ball or say like, I mean, yeah, you're going to have to recruit transfers probably in December as soon as that portal opens uh, for the first window. And people are going to look at the quarterback play and be like, yo, what the hell? Like, I'm not going to play for a guy that can't get me the ball. Like, and that's a big reason why they struggled to get portal guys this year. Don't get me wrong. And they beat out some significant programs for Jaquay Jackson in the end and ended up working out. I think that was a late spring edition, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, other than that, who else did they get? They got Nassim Brantley, who wasn't even eligible all year long. So another blunder um, that the offensive portal recruiting is going to be a struggle, um, especially skill position guys. And I, I just, it's going to be very, very hard to recruit guys right now based on uh i mean if you have an il it helps obviously but uh right now it's just it's it's not great uh and then uh another play that happened in the game when it was i think it was when it was 14 nothing on third and three Wimsat hands the ball off to Manungai. now this is supposed to be one of these okay and i know you've tried hard to figure out what kind of authority he has on this but mm -hmm. He, you would think, has got the decision. Do I give it to Manungai or hold on to it? And it, I, I, he gives the ball to Manungai with the defender basically right on top of him. Yeah. And he loses four yards. It's like, okay, well, that doesn't make any. I mean, how do you not know that if you're going to have a decision to hand the ball off to Manungai, that this would not be the time to do it? So, yeah. And then they have to settle for the field goal, which, by the way, is the bright spot. Because props to our field goal kicker, uh, but he's ending his rookie season pretty good, and he's starting yeah. to hit the ball deeper and deeper. And this is look, this is a good sign. Yeah, I actually I think that was that third and three was actually Aaron Young. I don't think it was Manon guy. Oh, was it? Or, okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, and and I've said this before. Um, I think. And this is probably the worst um, characteristic for a quarterback. I don't think he reads and reacts quick enough. I don't think he sees like the play and it's like, oh shit, I got to pull. Oh no, I got to hand off. Like you have to be like this. Like you got to be ready to go. You got to see a linebacker about to hit your running back in the last second, just pull back and then tuck and run or vice versa. And like, I'm going to take the hit and you're going to keep going or something like that. But it, it's just like, he, I don't think he reacts quick enough. And that, that's a big issue when it comes to quarterbacks yeah. whose decision making is yes. like, Literally, you have to make it in seconds. <laughs> Especially if you're a running quarterback, which which really he is. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's the only thing he's got going for him is that he, he's he's going to run the ball and he's going to try to use his legs. And because if he didn't have that, uh, he wouldn't yeah. even be playing. You know, yeah. so um, not that that's what we want out of our quarterback. We want some, uh, you know, passing ability. Um, mm -hmm. And then later on in the half, you had the broken coverage by. I I don't know if that was Igbenosin's fault. But have to go back and watch. I forget uh, that, that one. The, I, I remember the, the big one, touchdown. Yeah, and that was the one or well, that was not touchdown. Open. It was short, right? Yeah, short of the. That was again another yeah. pass play that I think they got down to the ten yard line, maybe. But that mm -hmm. was another big one. So you had the broken coverage. You had Igbenosen getting beat, which it looked like he got beat on on that slant. And then mm -hmm. you had, um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you also had Longa being getting beat. So there was just, just uh, the broken coverage, the missed tackles. The, and again, from, most, from the players that actually had, had decent seasons, it was just a, a mind blow uh, of mm -hmm. how this went 28-3 to three early on. And then Rutgers started to come back. Um, Wimzad had a big run on third and fourth. Dremel had that one-handed catch for 25. 
on third yeah, and five. Beautiful catch, by the that way. That was awesome. And then on third and six, Wimsat has that bad throw to Dremel. And it was funny because Millen is even Millen was pretty critical of Wimsat in this in this game. Oh, very. I was very happy and pleased that he was. Um, and he was critical of that one. Uh, because Dremel's wide open and he and he and he almost pretty much overthrows him and Dremel basically mm-hmm lost balance and instead of going for a first down he was short and um uh but on that drive even though we fell short uh they had the fourth down and that was the best really play call because maryland blitzed on that and that's the one when women's that was able to find an on guy wide open and mm-hmm. he went into the uh touchdown tw- went into the end zone for the touchdown 28 10. um and then they started to get a little bit momentum. I have to ask you because there was a play made by the linebacker, the redshirt freshman, Daniel Dejumbi. Dejumbi. Uh, uh, so it's uh, Jabome. Jabome. Okay. Yeah. The, so the D is like. Uh, yeah, the D is silent. Um, that touchdown pass was to. Uh, that was to Aaron Young, though. Not, oh, that uh, was Aaron Young guy. too. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron. So Aaron Young actually quietly had a pretty good game. Wow. Okay. Uh, so that was, ju- and, and so what do we know about this kid? Is, is he somebody that is, uh, just a player or is he somebody? So that- yeah, he's, he's really intriguing actually. So he's a Canadian, uh, kid, Canadian native, Canada native, um, came down to a football camp in, uh, in June or Ju- July, June. Yeah. It had to be June. Um, and just, they, they, they kind of saw a little bit of film on him and he was very, very raw. They saw him on camp and they're like, Hey, come down to our camp real quick. And he happened to be at a UMass camp. So him and a couple of uh, Canadian teammates from up in Canada and one of their coaches drove down from UMass to New Jersey the day before the camp. And it was, uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, they slept, they slept in their car the night before because they couldn't afford a hotel room. And they ended up sleeping in the car. And Rutgers was like, holy shit, this kid's actually really good. We're going to offer him on the spot. We want to get him here as soon as possible. So instead of being a 2024 kid, which he was, he was be able to reclass back to 2023. Um, they put him on, they gave him a scholarship offer. They said, Hey, call your parents, tell them to come down here. It's an official visit now for the weekend. So that means it's all expenses paid and your parents can come visit too. Parents came down to visit for the weekend, got him committed, good to go, showed up in camp. And he's just been a force uh, ever since. Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, that's v- good to very, know. very cool backstory and a very, very good player so far. It seems like excellent. Yeah, he seems to have pretty good size for the position as well. So that's, I, I take it back. I might have said twenty twenty three. I think he was a twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah. I believe he's a red shirt, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then he redshirted a year, obviously, and then that's does good. all this. But he's yeah. he's been making noise even his red, uh, freshman year too. Redshirt year. Great. Yeah, we can use all the help we can get. Uh, uh, and um, how's that unit going to look next year? potentially um i think it's going to be pretty good uh i think you probably two ray technically has another year i think you probably lose him still just because um it's what year four gonna be year five maybe actually maybe year six because the injury year um i forget his exact um dates but he does have one year left of eligibility um he's a father i mean he's can go to the nfl right now and make some significant money yeah. i wouldn't blame him one bit i would probably leave personally if that was my opinion um, and I don't know how much more he can really raise his stock. He's proved he's a good edge rusher. He's proved he's a linebacker now. He's very versatile. So yeah, I, I think this is him. probably yeah. his his peak in terms of NFL stock. So a guy that's already had an ACL injury just proved he could play a whole season. I wouldn't risk it, but we'll see. Um, Deion Jennings is gone. He's out of eligibility. Okay. Uh, Tyreen Powell could leave and go to the NFL. I don't know if he will now because of the uh, the injury. I think that hurts his stock. Uh, obviously, and I don't know if he'll be healthy enough by the time like um, yeah. all these these camps or not camps, um, the combine and all that other stuff and all the training stuff and I don't workouts all that good stuff. I don't know if he'll be able to do most of that. So, I mean, I'm sure he can do some of it, but I don't know if I would risk it and come back one more year, prove your worth again. You probably play yourself in the day too if you're if you're good enough next Absolutely. year. Absolutely, yeah. And then uh, they got a couple four stars that are coming in. Like Moses Walker is really good. Um, he's an up and comer. You saw Jabome today is pretty good. Uh, Jameer Wright Collins, we haven't seen in a couple weeks since that stupid yeah. uh, targeting, not targeting call. Um, yeah, he's he's been solid. They're, they have they have a lot of guys lined up, and they're kind of just stacking on talent on talent on talent. To be honest, there. Yeah, that's not a surprise. No one, Shiano. That back seven is usually loaded. Um, oh yeah. 
And then uh, let's see. There was uh, the play, the bad play by an, another bad play. But um, how do you pronounce uh, his last name? Tommy. Uh, Amonkwa. There you go. Amonkwa. Tommy Amonkwa yeah. had that third and 12 holding penalty. But mm -hmm. even though that looked like that killed momentum and Maryland wound up with another big play. Uh, mm -hmm. down to the Rutgers 17. On the next play, Dixon stripped the wide receiver and they recovered the fumble uh, with four minutes left and a half. And yeah. um, they were able to um, at least stop that potential uh, touchdown drive there. But then mm -hmm. we saw another wide open Dremel that if he throws the ball to Dremel, instead of just throwing the ball to a covered, I think there was Jackson, yeah, Dremel not only catches the ball, but who knows? I mm -hmm. mean, it's possible that he might go for the distance. That's how wide open he was. Um, and uh, and then on third and five, uh, Wimsat threw a 500 mile an hour uh, pitch <laughs> to Jackson, who couldn't hold on to the ball. Yeah. Which, nobody blamed him for it. And then he had a punt. Um, yeah, that's what drives me nuts, though. Is like they were down 28 to 10. And this defense was still fighting and giving them life. They got the fumble. Then, then they just do nothing on offense. And then you're, um, you're going to say it next. The, the interception. And then they do. They did score on that next one. But then it's just like they don't do anything else. And personally, I thought it was a little weird they didn't go for two on that one. But maybe that's just me because it puts it to ten instead of eleven. But it, at this point, it's, you're, you're down ten or eleven, so I guess yeah. it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I don't, mind, just, I don't uh, mind not playing. I think yeah, that's that's like the new age analytics deal and i'm not surprised mm -hmm. shiano is not especially uh this early in the game i'm okay with it i don't like chasing mm -hmm. points and by the way yeah. with our offense uh, you know you're better off just taking the point uh, i don't trust yeah. our offense being able to get to but i hear what you're saying Na nowadays most most teams i think would have went for two um and even though we scored did score a touchdown after that uh, melton interception uh, let's keep in mind, as the, as the announcer said, Wimsett threw the moon ball to Washington. Now, if he doesn't throw a moon ball and throws the ball where it should have been, that would have been an easy seven. But Washington made, makes a really great catch co coming back a little bit for the ball. That was clearly mm -hmm. underthrown. And uh, they went ahead and scored a touchdown, and it was 28-17 at the half. So I don't know how many balls he threw. He threw more deep passes today than he's thrown all season and he completed what one or two of them out of like the ten? one was washington and he got uh, destroyed and the pass interference <laughs> um i think there's another one to washington actually down on the yes. lower end of the screen I yeah I so. think, and then there's someone else i think actually that might have just been it, it right strong, it might have been the strong get one yeah there was one to strong but it was completely overthrown both strong and the defender <laughs> yeah so he he he, he had so much many bad I mean, there. I don't know what the chart says, but the chart probably says oh, very over twenty-five. Oh. He's, he was probably one or two for ten or something like that. So, yeah. and the thing is, it's not even close. No. I mean, you would think that. All right, at some point, the more he throws these deep balls, they're going to get a little bit closer, or he's going to give him a, a chance to catch the ball. But mm -hmm. they don't have a shot. So. Yeah. Anyway, that was really it. Nothing really happened in the second half because as soon as yeah. Rutgers came out and went three and out, Maryland scored the touchdown. You know it was over. Even though Maryland uh, Rutgers defense did a really good job for the entire half, basically, of mm. holding Maryland and giving Rutgers time in and time out opportunities that they just uh, did not take advantage of. So yeah, um, we do have a couple super chats. I did want to shout out um, George Forbes uh, sent us a super chat. Didn't no uh, no message, just super chat. So thanks to George. Um, HJG, who's been a uh, longtime follower of the show, I guess, since uh, since we started this in, this season. Uh, he said, well, today sucked. I enjoyed the show this season. Thanks a lot, guys. And then uh, Jordan said, Rich, how attractive is RU to a quarterback transfer, do you think? How much money do you have? If you have enough yeah. money, we, you can go buy one pretty, pretty yeah. easily. We need a one-year uh, guy. That's all we need yeah, is a yeah. one-year guy. So someone, someone go take out a mortgage real quick, and then you can get get a pretty good quarterback. You know, there's, was, there's some lower level guys that are out there already there are. that are, all, that are yep. pretty, pretty, pretty good that have FBS offer, Power Five offers already. Like, I know the New Hampshire kids already got Power Five interest from about 12, 15 schools. I was talking to him yesterday. Um, there's the Matt Sluka kid from Holy Cross who's probably going to follow his head coach wherever his head coach goes because there's rumors of that going, him going to the Power Five level, but. 
kids like super accurate. These kids are throwing like 65, 68% completion percentage. And I'm sitting over here watching a kid throw for 48. That's terrible. Like, I know. Be, I watched the Illinois Northwestern, some of that game. And I'm realizing that here's two teams, Illinois and Northwestern, that mm. should not be better football programs than us. I, I think in the next year or two, if, if things keep going the way they're going, we should be better than them. And both of those uh, teams this season had not only first, but second string quarterbacks that were better than Gavin Wims at. Both of them. Yeah. So uh, actual fun fact, now that Northwestern did get that win, um, they are, Rutgers is now 1-44 and 44 against opponents that have a winning record in league play. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That, okay. record, that, that was also Rutgers' only win over a Big Ten team that has finished a season oh. with a winning conference record. That's oh, what it was. I'm sorry. That's okay. So that was <laughs> yeah. the one win. Yeah, this year with Northwestern. With, I'm, I'm just this from Brian Fonseca on Twitter. He said, with Northwestern improving to five <laughs> and four in league play, Rutgers now owns a win over a Big Ten team that has finished a season with a winning conference record. Yeah. The Scarlet Knights are now one in 44 against such opponents since they joined the league in 2014. All right. That yeah. is a stat and a half it shows you how far we have to still go so and that, that's that's an interim head coach my oh I, he's full-time head coach now but yeah yikes yeah a completely different team from the team that uh we played early on in the season so yeah, yeah. uh and and you, you said it before like other quarterbacks like other teams are having these great quarterback plays um look at uh who was it today purdue there's a big argument on our board off, all off season long about how Hudson Card and versus Gavin Wimsett, who's the better quarterback? Well, Hudson Card just torched Indiana for 275, three touchdowns, 21 of 34, and and also ran for 85 yards and a touchdown. So, yeah. I mean, well, there's no argument. I mean, who's arguing? Just, I, they, there was a huge one this summer on our boards, wow. and it's just like it's it's how just they, driving I mean, us on. because the argument's there, there were, over. The thing that really drives me nuts the most is that there were people, there were beat writers that were saying Gavin Wimsett looks super improved this this fall, this camp. I I, I watched every practice. You you don't understand. He looks great. He's gonna have the best season ever. I, I'm like, what are we watching the same thing? Because yeah. I just saw him do the same thing all season long that he did in training camp. It's not. It, it ha- you can't fix accuracy. Can't I'm always gonna be to in that guys. boat, and that's that's it. Like this man's got five guys wide open, five yards in front of him. Fastball, hundred mile per hour. Guy's got a guy wide open down the sideline, sails it over his head. Like, he doesn't have touch. It's sick. And then on top of that, the read and react we were talking about before, is getting people crushed. Yeah. <laughs> and if he does hit a receiver and the receiver gets lucky and catches the ball, they're tripping, trying to dive for it because they can't get any yards after the catch. <laughs> and it has to be deflating to the, uh, to, to the, to the players on the team. They're the ones that uh, hold the players accountable more than anything. And – uh, they, they know it. You know, just, that doesn't make them a bad teammate. It doesn't mean that they don't want Gavin. If they believe he's a really good teammate, doesn't mean that they don't want him to succeed. But come on, I mean, you all played. Everybody played. If you didn't play, you know, uh, in you know, Division One college football, or you never played uh, any sort of college football, but you played football with your friends. Even when you did that, you knew who was good. You knew who you could trust, and you just knew it. And that didn't mean you didn't like the guy. But you just knew it, and that, that's that's what that's what I think has to go on with these guys. Is that sooner or later, and maybe that's part of what happened today. I don't know, but sooner or later, it's got to affect them. It has to. Oh yeah, and I mean, I would say today, same thing as it's it's almost like a repeat of last year. To be honest, the same exact Maryland game. They get to that final game, it's like they have no juice left. No one, they're like defeated. They're like fuck it, we just lost three games in a row, and then they do this, and they just show up pathetic. Like it was just no performance at all, really. I give I give some guys credit. Don't get me wrong. Like Kyle Manonga, like I said, great game. Jay Patel, ten in a row now, 50, 50 yarder, fifty one yarder, whatever it was, great game. I really can't name any other. Uh, Isaiah Washington, I should, I'll give him yeah, that. He did have a good game. Yeah, he, he had a solid game. But yeah. it's like, dude, it, it took you what five years? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? His best game is like, last. Yeah, of yeah. course, it's his last game, and it's yeah. like, all right, well, great, like that. That meant nothing, but right. yeah. And then the defense. Uh, they just get they they give up too many big chunks in the beginning. I don't know what was going on. They were attacking Longer Beam, which I was shocked by because Longer Beam was pretty good all season long, but he has been on that questionable report for the past couple of weeks. I don't think he was on it this week, but he was on it the past two weeks. So 
take it for a grain of salt. They're, these guys are banged up too. Um, but I, someone said it actually. A former Rutgers beat writer, Tom Lucci, said, "Go look up uh, Shiano's record in December." And I, I'm trying to find the exact numbers, but I, I know for what it's worth, it's not very pretty in this uh, November. He's he's always had bad records in November, and it's just I think his teams just end up getting beat up because they're playing so crazy, like and. On, on defense, especially like that, it's an attacking defense. Maybe not as much this year, but well, is he saying that basically on his second term? He's saying in general, like just every time Shiano's been at Rutgers in November, apparently it's been rough. I don't yeah. know the exact numbers to it, which yeah. I, I'm I'd be curious to find out because uh, I mean, obviously the last two seasons we know of, yeah, how bad not it's good. been. So, but that, that's also based on the Big Ten schedule kind of being a little wacky and screwy. And then in giving. 21, uh, you know, the last two games didn't go well, but, you know, they did win two of the last five. And in the COVID season, they won two of the last four. So I don't know. Maybe he's just yeah. looking at the last two seasons, really. And he's, and it's, and, 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 but, and because you can't grade Shiano and even in his first term, because those first whatever years, Mm -hmm. However long they were, five or six years, I'm sure he had a lot of losing towards the end of the season, in the beginning of the season as well. Yeah. So. Actually, I'm looking at it now. Like 20, 2010, he went 0 for 4. 2009, he went 2 two for 4. Or 2, yeah, 2 for 4. Like, it's not crazy, I guess. I, I can see what he's coming from a little bit just because his teams do get worn down. Another 2 for 4 season in November in 2007, 2006. Six, that's when he had those two losses against Cincy and West Virginia. So it's, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I don't know. I, it's just, I, it's I, I don't want to look at the schedule. Because yeah. we do seem to play the best teams later in the season, especially in the Big Ten. But yeah, the, the Big Ten's not doing them any favors whatsoever. That's no. not, uh, not helping. But so it's, yeah. uh, but it, it's weird too. Cause like when I asked him the question about that Gavin autonomy thing, and I, I thought this was a, a weird way to respond to it. Um, <laughs> Cause I was like, Hey, like does Gavin have the autonomy to kind of like, and I probably asked in a poor way because I, I did mention like inside zones and inside reads. And he was like, I'm not going to give up the plays, but like, if I told you in June, we'd be six and three going against Iowa and down six in the fourth quarter, would you take it? And I was like, I mean, yeah, I guess. But like, I also want to like tell you expectations kind of change. Like, yeah. like you can get to that bowl game. Like it seemed like once they got to the bowl game, that was like, all right, that's our goal. We got to the bowl game. But you could have got more than the bowl game. You could have got seven wins against Maryland. You could have got an eight win against uh, Wisconsin. You, hell, you could have got a ninth win against Ohio State if I, anyone else was out there. Like, it's, yes, it's, that's yeah. the point. If we had a quarterback, maybe we win the game against Ohio State. Maybe we even win the game against Penn State. Uh, we just don't have it. And so the expectations are just not there. I can't imagine, and again, that's what it goes back to. I wonder what kind of expectations even the players have of when they go out there and they could say what they want about chopping and 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 you know everybody's uh, confident, but how confident really are you that you're going to be able to pull these games out with this quarterback? And I'm sorry, but that's why special quarterbacks. That's why they're special, not even special ones, but good ones. That's why you, they rally around the good ones because mm -hmm. they lift up the team. Well, what do you think the bad ones do? They do the exact opposite. Yeah, They bring the team down. They give the team, uh, it's like a bad shot in the arm. It's just, it's, it's depressing. And if you think we're depressed as fans, I mean, they are too. I know they're closer to it because they're friends and these are their, this is their family. Um, but they feel it. They feel it like we do. And now that's why it's up to the coach. It's up to the coach to uh, find the right guy. And it can't be like this again next year. It can't. Nobody yeah. wants to see this. Nobody wants to fast forward to the beginning, the opening kickoff next year, and watch Gavin Wimsatt stand there and the opening play and look around for 25 seconds and do that nonsense again. <laughs> Nobody is going to stand for that. Nobody. <sighs> Yeah, well, the good news is it's Howard next year to open up season, so you get, you get a nice <laughs> little win. Um, but, yeah, yeah. no, uh, we do have a new uh, super chat, too, from Delmarva Fishing. He said the game was so bad, but I decided to go to work for overtime at halftime. Smart, um, <laughs> smart man. Go make that money. Do you think uh, Talia is the best quarterback in the Big Ten? Thanks for, for TKR shows. They've been awesome for long drives at work. Um, yeah, I'd say 
I, I think it's hard to argue otherwise. Although JJ McCarthy looked pretty damn good today. Yeah, McCarthy seems to. So, uh, it's close. Yeah, it's it is big because it's like it's you know like it's like basketball. It's like you, you put a, a star player on a, on a mediocre team or a, play, a good player on a mediocre team and he looks like a star. But then yeah. you put him in the spotlight and they have to play the big games. You have to make the big throws, sort of like what J.J. was doing today. And can mm -hmm. he do that? Well, we don't know. That's the thing we don't know. We'll find out at the next level. Maybe he'll be a, a draft pick and because there's going to be a deep class of, of quarterbacks and he's oh, going to yeah. be part of it. So maybe he's going to be a hidden gem or – Maybe we're going to look at it and we go, yeah, but he he was just – it just looked that way because of uh, the team he played for. But I, I think that he's going to give it a – I think he's going to give it a go as, as a potential starter at the next level. I think he's that talented. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think he definitely – well, let, let me ask you this. If you had to choose right now um, going into next week mm -hmm. and, and you had to choose a quarterback to win a, a, a game in the Big Ten, let's say the Big Ten championship game, who would you pick? Uh, Talia or JJ? Or anybody in the Big Ten. Uh, anybody in the Big Ten? That's a tough, I'd, I'd probably have to go JJ McCarthy just because he's been working with these guys forever. Like, I, I just... Do you just have more been, confidence? Because, I mean, the guy's only lost one career game. Yeah, that helps. so that helps. Yeah. yeah, he's got that little bit of swagger, too. Yeah. And and don't get me wrong, Talia does, too. But uh, I just... Tal Talia's... He'd be a close second. After that, I, it's, a, yeah. it's a guessing game, honestly. It's... Uh, if I'm taking Big Ten quarterbacks only, that's a really actually a tough one after those two. It could be, it could be anyone. Um, you could argue Kyle McCord, but I just don't think Kyle McCord's got the juice Not or, yet. Nah. at all. Showed um, that late in the game. Yeah, I, I'd probably I, I'd go JJ, but Talia's right there. Absolutely. And and you know it, it annoys me a little bit because they hyped up the hell out of that like career passing thing for the most Big Ten passing yards ever. And I get it. Don't get me wrong. He got it. He deserves it. But I hate that like all these records are being broken because these guys all got an extra year yeah. now. And it's yeah. like, come on, like we're breaking records that these guys had three, four years. These guys are now having four or five years. It's like it's, Throwing it's kind on of top dumb, of the but... fact that if you if you want to try to compare them to players from even just 10 years ago or 15 yeah. years ago, those guys, we didn't throw the ball that much. I mean, this yeah. is an era of throwing the football. And that's true, too. You just throw that into the mix on top of the extra year it's it's mm. just that's why generally football fans don't really care as much about stats as much as baseball fans do no. or, or or in other sports football you know it's it's a nice thing and yeah it's cool but it's that's part of it the the mm. the, the times have changed so dramatically in football compared to say just baseball baseball for the most part it's the same game yeah you could say what you want about home runs i mean obviously that's different mm. but um yeah but you yeah. know what bottom line i think talia could very well be the best uh, quarterback in the big 10 it'll be interesting to see whether or not he wins first team because i think he probably will what do you think yeah, i think they might because the the passing record thing they might have to uh just because jj's offense is also so catered to running the ball yeah at michigan so and that, that makes a lot of sense i would give him yeah i would i would argue he probably gets it yeah. And I'd, I'd be curious. I know he was at Bama for that one year, and he he played in a limited time. I think it was like four or five games, um, maybe not even that much. But he, uh, I would like to see. I would have liked to see him on a better team because, yeah. like Maryland teams, like they're not great. They're like a consistent like six, anywhere from five to seven wins every year, pretty much. Um, so it sucks because I would have liked to see him on a better team. But hell, like like you said, maybe we'll see how he does in the NFL. He is reckless at times, but I feel like he almost has to be because he doesn't really have. Much to work with. Yes. And I think he gets into the right system. I don't think there's any uh, – why not? Absolutely. He's got the goods to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Just take a look at the quarterbacks right now and the the carousel of guys that have not had even his background who are getting chances to start. Yeah, Tim Boyle. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So Makes come no on. <laughs> I think I'd rather have Tally in there right now over Boyle. So Yeah, I yeah, don't disagree. I, I think he could do it. Just put him I on find the right it wild, team. and I, I hate to harp on Talia a little more, but like I find it wild how accurate he was today. Like even like his balls, like me and Mike were talking about it through text. Like some of his balls he was throwing, they looked like ducks, and then all of a sudden it just lands perfectly in the pocket of the receiver, and it's like whoa, that's all that matters. That that worked. Okay, yeah. that's cool. And then he did it again, and I'm like, oh shit! Like accuracy was on point today for him, so I, I give him credit, and not on point for the other side. It's just a tale of a 
two quarterbacks, I guess. That's that's all it is. That, that's yeah. again, that's why you just hope that coach. See, in, in one way, if Rutgers was going to lose today, I think this was a good way to lose because let Wimsat play as bad as he can play, and let that be the reminder for coach. Even though we got a ball game, but let that be mm-hmm. a reminder. Uh, don't go, don't get tricked by what happened in the Penn State game. Don't do that. This is the guy. Okay, this is the guy for the most part that that's been playing for the past year and a half, two years. Don't get tricked and fooled because if let's say he played pretty well today or just okay, and then he plays okay in the ball, well then that means he's had a really good game, two okay games. Hey man, we got something. Gavin Wims at next year. Maybe he's the guy. Matt, mm-hmm. Now he's played this awful to remind everybody, including coach, that this is not the guy, man. You can't rest all of your your football uh, uh, season next season on this guy. And, and then Serace, you have to have a veteran in there just in case. Because, like again, we think there's a possibility Serace might be able to be ready. But if he's not, then if it's Gavin Wimsett or Bust, it's just – it ain't going to work. We know that. Yeah, no, it's it's very tough. I, I really don't know. It's uh, it's it's it is weird because he did just have a really good game, so they're gonna try to harp on that, I think. And he's never gonna badmouth his quarterback in the press no. conference, so I'm intrigued no. to see what he says in that. But never. it's at some point you have to consider. Like, I know some people keep saying Simon, dude, it's too late this year for know. Simon. Yeah. Obviously, it's well, number one, it's like yeah. season's over. It's way too late. But uh, like even like going into Penn St- or before Penn State, who's the game before that? Iowa. People are like, put in Simon, put in Simon. I'm like, no, no, it's too late in the season. Just stay with Wimsett. Just let it ride. If it, it is what it is. But he's just not the he's not the answer. Like I, I hate to keep harping on it, but the guy is just not accurate. He's not good. He's not accurate. He can't read and react. He has no accuracy. He can't hit a fucking broadside of a barn. And I know it's a cliche because everyone says it, but it's a, that this is a fact. <laughs> like forty eight percent, thirteen of thirty four today. And this is, I don't even know if that's his worst ever performance because I feel like he's had worse. Uh, do you think? It's it's pretty damn close. I, I think feel this like. is as bad as bad as he's ever played. It's, I can't, yeah, I, I, I don't bad, know. But... Could he have played this bad before? I know he's had a lot of bad games, but this was as bad as we've ever seen it play. Not just statistically speaking, but just obviously just as as off as he has been or was as his entire game. So I mean, yeah, but, last year Penn, Penn State ten of twenty nine, ten of twenty five. Uh, 16 of 35, 13 of 28, 10 of 14 of 29, 11 of 21, a little better. But like, there's so <laughs> there's over one, two, three, four, four, there's 15 performances or 15 game logs where he has passed for under 50 percent. Yeah, that's how you get the 48 percent or whatever it was, 49 <laughs> yeah. percent before the actually, he probably is. Well, that, that, that's his that's now. his career this, this year. I don't know what it is with the new game. Yeah, but the new game, it's probably it's it's got to be ugly. Remember when we talked last week and about how he got off to the good start, and so we we, we, we I know and we talked about why the court why co why 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 uh, Kirk did not go to him more. Why didn't they take advantage of the fact that he was actually throwing the ball well? Forty seven percent. Forty seven percent. It's even worse. I get so, dropped two points. Yeah, there you go. That's and he's got one more game at least this season. Yeah. So look, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna be practicing for the next few weeks, and he's gonna go out there, and we'll we'll, we'll see. I mean, because again, maybe the worst thing that could happen for us fans if we if we collectively want to change is for Gavin Wimsett to have a good bowl game. Yeah. It's it's going to be interesting to see what they do because obviously um, AJ Serace comes in uh, the spring. Uh, him and his running back will be in the spring. Gabriel Winovich. Uh, I just don't know if they'll trust a freshman. I just can't see them trusting a freshman. And I do think a freshman probably needs a, a year to get under the system. It's it's kind of almost like the NFL. Like you, see how many rookies realistically work year one as a quarterback? No, not almost, many. You have to be yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like you you kind of wish like if like. Uh, Looking at the Carolina Panthers, like you kind of wish you had a like a veteran there, right? Like instead of Bryce Young out there swinging at at nothing at the dirt. <laughs> um, C.J. Stroud, mind you, has worked, but most of them don't work year yeah, one. Most and of it's them tough. Don't. Like, no. 
So I, I do think that's why you, you need a stopgap. And I, I, number one, Wim Sat's not it. Number two, I think you need a stopgap for this race. Find a one-year guy. There's plenty of them out there already from the lower levels. Like, And now starting tomorrow, I guarantee, maybe not tomorrow because it takes like two days for the compliance and everything to go through for portal stuff. But you're going to see a ton of people enter. Mississippi State starting quarterback has thrown for 12,000 yards in his career. He entered the portal. Like there's, there's just name on name on name. Texas Tech starting quarterback entered the portal. Uh, it's it's going to get crazy. It's going to be insane. And there's going to be so many options. And you don't have to throw a million dollars at these kids. You could get a decent quarterback like a Hudson card, for example, for say, I don't know, 250, kind of like similar to what Purdue just paid him. So it's not insane. Like you could find a quarterback out there. And I'm not asking you to get a superstar. No, I'm asking you to just get someone that can fucking hit a wide receiver, an open receiver. Well, again, I bring up Bowman. I think he's a great example. Here's a guy who gets off to a great start at Texas Tech for a few years, leaves mm -hmm. the program. You know, he had injuries, leaves the program, hangs out at Michigan for two years as their number three quarterback and doesn't play a lick. Mm -hmm. Then transfers to Texas Tech, This, I mean, to yeah, to Oklahoma State this past year. And you're thinking, oh, that's interesting. I guess maybe he's trying to get one more season out of it, out of his uh, career before it's all over. And he's... Right now, they're, they're uh, I think, wait, did they beat BYU today? Was that uh, I don't know. When I, when I left it. Oh, they were in overtime when I left it. But let's say they won that game, and, and that means they're in the Big 12 championship game. With, with a quarterback that I can't imagine it took $250,000 to get Alex Bowman. <laughs> yeah. Or Alan Bowman. So, Alan, yeah. Uh, that's they, all you need is a guy like that. Yeah, 9-3, and three, so they did win. Yeah. So and he it's threw, not that threw, hard. Threw for 320. Mind you, two interceptions, but he's, he's had a hell of a year. Yeah, and that's all we're looking for. And the thing is, though, we talked about this last year and nothing happened. And it's like, I just get the feeling, because we've been down this road before, man. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you, Shiano named Wims at the starter when? A couple weeks before training camp, but in reality... For being honest, it was probably like I think we all knew pretty well in spring ball. Okay. But officially named it like publicly was like a couple weeks before training camp. So we're talking before, early August, mid August. So Cerise so comes in when? Uh, January 14th or 15th. I forget what it is. It's one of those days. So he'll have what? How many practices will he have before uh, training you camp? You get 15 in spring. At 15? I think it's 15 in spring. Okay. And then you get uh you can work out with your players and strength and conditioning coaches all summer. You can't you can work out with the coaching staff like once a week during some weird summer eval period. All right. Well, but but for the most part, it's probably just those fifteen practices. And but they'll, I mean, he'll have the playbook way sure. before that. As soon as he signs the dotted line in December, he'll have the playbook in his hands, basically. Well, that's going to be the measuring stick right there, is because yeah, Shiano did make the call earlier than normal. Well, what will he do this time? You know, if Serace actually does everything he possibly can to look like, not that he's necessarily going to start opening day, but that mm -hmm. it, it, it deserves to be a competition. And you're not just going to hand it over to Wimsat again. Um, and again, this is all just if they don't sign a, a veteran. That's going to be the test. That's what's going to tell us whether or not Shiano is just blindly going back to Wimsat again if he just does the same thing and says he's our starting quarterback yeah it's i i don't know what you do i mean i i think i know what i would do yeah, i don't know, know what, what he, we would do yeah. i i don't know what he's gonna do and it's yeah. it's almost a little uh a little concerning just because it's it's scary like you might be running watching the same exact team next year um for the most part actually minus a lot of weapons because there's a lot of nfl guys that could just up and leave so so we get uh, long back next year uh, Chris Long? Yeah. Yeah, he'll be back, but, I mean, I don't know how much to count on him for the sole fact that the man's been injured every year for the past, like, two or three years. So. True. And Dremel, does he have one more year left? Dremel is done, I believe. He's done already. Just yeah. when he becomes uh, a big part of our team, he's done. Yeah, he um, – I could double-check right now. Actually, no, I take it back. Dremel has one more year. Great. Bye -bye. Awesome. Yeah. So that means we got Long and Dremel back. Uh, we've mm -hmm. obviously got strong back who could be our number one receiver because Jackson's gone, right? Yeah. Jackson's out. Washington's out. Brantley who never played a snap is probably out. 
depending on what happens with that NCAA issue that he's dealing with. So who who the hell knows? Okay, so that's possible. He might be part of the team next year, Brantley. Possible. It's possible. Um, Rashad Rochelle. Uh, did <laughs> I do do the kick return? Like, oh yeah, no more of that. Yeah, just find I, a position. I, how how many muffed punts, kicks, whatever he's had, and then he does this. This is the second time he's done this, where he runs out of bounds with the ball, and it's like just let the ball go out of bounds. It's not that hard. Yeah, I thought um, maybe he was uh, playing. Uh, he was a punt. Re- he was playing for Auburn there in the fourth quarter. See what happened then, there? Yeah. Oh wow. That, yeah. yeah. Absolutely insane. Yeah. But before the thirty yard touchdown. Yeah. On yeah. Fourth and thirty. But uh, yeah. So um, and is, and are there any freshmen? Um, Famatu Famatu Ray looks pretty decent. He might be able to make some noise down the That's line, right. but okay. he's uh, Je- Jesse O'Fury started to make some noise okay. uh, a little bit. He played a couple snaps. Um, he was injured in training camp, so he missed a little bit. Uh, the others like there's there's three other fresh one two three yeah three other freshmen in Dylan Braithwaite, uh, DeAndre Johnson, and Valena Coon, and. I don't know if any of them are really going to play next year. Sure. I know there's been a lot of hype around like a Dylan Braithwaite because he's he's probably arguably the second, maybe third fastest guy on the team, maybe even first actually. Okay. Um, he's he's definitely up there in speed, but uh, I do think he still needs to gain a lot of muscle. He's he's not there yet. I'd, I'd say out of all the freshmen, it's going to be a Fury, Strong, and Two Ray. Not in that order. What we might see a lot of all three next year, but I, I do think you hit the portal. I don't think you have an option. I think you have to hit the portal again. That's that's how recruiting works. High school recruiting is basically like dead now. Like you have to hit the portal like nonstop. So you're going to be able to start what signing transfers when? So you can't sign them per se, but they can technically commit whenever right. they want. Like they, they there's kids that uh there's a kid that transferred from Michigan State uh a month ago. He already committed to Arkansas. Okay. Like he's ready to go. He they signed financial aid paperwork, so it's more like or financial paperwork. Um. So it's a little tough, like, and then on top of it, like, don't discount the fact that schools are going to be reaching out to Rutgers players starting tomorrow morning. That's yeah. it, tampering is in full effect. There's yeah. clearly no rules, like, because the NCAA hasn't like issued any, like, yeah, they've issued warnings, but they haven't done shit else. Like, they they haven't done anything at all. Yeah. Like, you are allowed to do basically anything and everything you want. And from what we've been told, is this team is going to get. Phone call after phone call after phone call. I'm sure someone's going to call Aaron Lewis tomorrow and be like, hey, man, how much to come down to the SEC? He might say, I'm good and might be a good guy because he's a, a New Jersey guy and he, he's already left school or left New Jersey before. But then there's others that might be like, yo, like you got 300K? Like I'll, I'll leave right now. Like, yep. <laughs> so and Melton has one more year, but chances are he's gone. I think he's gone. The way everything was – Today there were signs from his family. They he went and celebrated senior day. I'd have to guess he's probably gone. Um, they already started following and reaching out to a couple different uh, cornerbacks in the portal. Okay. So something that I, I can't imagine they would do that with Melton returning, especially when you still have Longer Beam and Rogers and a bunch of other guys. So I, I, I do think they're probably going to go to the portal for that one. And I think Melton's gone. And that should be and that should be a position that we should have no no worries about because if there is a position that uh, any recruit um, any transfer would understand mm-hmm. that you you go to Shiano you go to Rutgers you, you you're there for a year or two that's a great springboard to the NFL so yeah I mean look at uh look at Trey Avery look at Flip Dixon this year he just played himself into a draft pick if he leaves and he still has a year technically yep but but again it's a guy that I don't know if he can get much better than this season so I'd Personally, I'm taking the money and I'm out. I'm not risking injury. But and, uh, yeah, um, Pierce. If, Pierce Colin has Pierce. another. He has another year. I don't know what he's going to do. I think he has NFL potential. He looked pretty bad today. Yeah, we do seem uh, to le- lo- lose qu- quite a bit of linemen in our final in their final seasons. Yeah. They seem to leave Jonah Jackson, uh, O'Neal. It's uh, the highest paid uh, yeah. pr- uh, thing in the market position. Can't even think of the thing. The name. And that, yeah, of course, high... is the biggest need. Is that offensive line? Yeah, and you lose Dunlap and Sutton, so like your your right tackle is gone, your right guard is gone. You might lose your left tackle and Pierce. You return Zelinskis, who has another year, another two years. Um, who am I missing? I'm missing someone. Oh, Brian Felter still has another year technically. 
but he had a good year too. And there's no guarantees. He wasn't a starter at the beginning of the season. Like, is he a starter next season? Who who knows? I think uh, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird team next year. Well, look, it's a bowl season, and there's po- lots of positives to that. That'll help because uh, if you thought it was hard for Rutgers a couple of years ago, which it was uh, when Shannon first got here, and as bad as the state of the program was, well, it's just got progressively better. And the better it gets, the easier it gets. Not that it's going to be easy, but the easier it gets for us to go out and. Oh, shit. Well, what was that? Sorry, uh, dog gate fell. <laughs> oh, the dog gate. Yeah, sorry. So, well, it probably sounded a lot uh, more vicious to you. Yeah, it just it just yeah. startled me. I probably looked like an asshole on this video. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that'll help us. So. Uh, but look, um, I think we have a good enough team. That's why we've, we've spent a lot of time on this show about WIMSAT because we have a good enough program now, and I think we'll be a good enough program mm-hmm. uh, and team next year that it's all going to come down to the quarterback position. And uh, are we just going to be settling for another five or six win team next season, or are we trying to do something better? And that's uh, what we'll find that out. Coach is going to d- dictate uh, that call on whether or not he brings in a transfer. Yeah, um, we do have two questions from a super chatter. Uh, Jonathan Berger, shout out to you for number one for donating to the show. Uh, he said, who does it look like we are going to play in the pinstripe bowl? Uh, I know I did put out a joke on Twitter because Syracuse is bowl eligible, but it's not. I don't think it's going to be Syracuse because Syracuse played in it last year. Boston uh, College. Although, oh, that's what it sounds like. It's either Boston College or Georgia Tech. It's leaning Georgia Tech right now, but it could go back to Boston College. Um, it's probably more than likely one of those two. Um, Doesn't yeah. Boston College make more sense? It does because there's a weird stadium, of course. Yeah. Well, there's a weird rule in the pinstripe bowl, or well, not even pinstripe bowl. It's a Big Ten rule, I should say, where they try to swap out a different opponent um, into every bowl. Like so, like the pinstripe, say hypothetically, it was it had Minnesota last year. Okay. They don't want Minnesota again for another like seven years or eight wow. years. Wow. Okay. Is. They want to try to rotate in as many teams as they can, okay. which which makes sense. Get a new team every year. You don't want the same crowd, same wow. thing over and over and over again. Now, as mind long you, as you're bringing in, you yeah. know, seats and money. Now, mind you, in 2010 and 2012, it was Syracuse. In 2011 and 2013, it was Rutgers. So it's like, yeah, they've done it before. So it's not crazy. So Syracuse was in it last year. It wouldn't shock me to see a Rutgers Syracuse or a Rutgers Boston College. I think those make the most sense Absolutely. for a big crowd. Yeah. But it does sound like Georgia Tech is the favorite right now for that. But it's like 110% pinstripe ball. Like there was no question about it. Even if they won this game, it was pinstripe ball. Well, if you want Rutgers to win, you better root for the decision to be Syracuse or Boston College because Georgia Tech, uh, I'm, I don't know, they're, they're having a really nice season. You know they've they've got some talent. I think they're clearly better than Boston College and Syracuse. So, I mean they're down to Georgia right now by one with four minutes left in the second. Yeah, there you go. So, so I mean they got uh, that. See, transfer quarterback. There you go. Ninety. What is it like? Seventy percent of uh, Power Five programs have transfer quarterbacks. They got that kid from A and M, I believe, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he was, was like so supposed to be this like hot shot. I think it was a five star, and it just didn't work. Might have. And uh, and then and he fig- and then he figure okay normally without the transfer portal he's in the bench and he never does anything but he gets the opportunity he goes to a lower level even though it's still power five but it's a big drop from Texas A and M to Georgia Tech and he actually looks good you know he ha- he makes plays and he and he looks like the perfect quarterback for that team and and they have a bowl season so yeah that's what it's hey. supposed to be about. Yeah, I mean, he leads the team in passing and rushing today versus Georgia, number number one Georgia. So it's uh, – Yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, now that being said, there was another question from Jonathan. He said, where are the Tommy DeVitos of Rutgers? I'm glad you brought that up because I have a little story. Not really a little story. It's a quick little tidbit. Tommy DeVito would have came to Rutgers probably via the portal. Instead, where where did he go? Where did he go? Illinois, I think it was. Uh, Rutgers was confident in Gavin Wimpsett. Yes. He was their future. Gavin was their future. So at the time, they said, hey, Gavin's our future. Like, we're not going to promise you anything. Tommy wants to promise the job, blah, blah, blah. Goes to Illinois, starts, does good, whatever, makes the league, power practice squad, whatever it is. So, therefore, that's why Tommy DeVito is not at Rutgers, and that's why Rutgers is with Gavin. That's the problem. 
Yeah. That's that's the issue. That's why I just don't have confidence in uh, it's the only thing that bugs the hell out of me with Cociano. The only thing is is how he handles that quarterback spot. And it's like the, <laughs> the biggest thing on the team. So but you know, you just got to get lucky really. Uh, sometimes it it takes luck, but I also yeah, think that he's uh He's just, I don't know what it is. I'd like to, you know, because he's never going to tell you the truth. It's all, you know, but I, I would like to get him in a room and just sit down and talk to him. And this is just between you and me. Tell me, why do you like this guy? Why are you doing it this way? There's just so many questions you would want answers to that you're just never going to get. So. Yeah. Um, two more questions. Actually, one, one super chat, one non super chat, one uh, super chat from Arthur Nisbeth. Uh, he said, when Rutgers recruits, do we normally re focus on defense or is it split between offense and defense? It's split. Like they don't, they don't focus on one side of the ball. I know it looks like it based on the style of play that they've had this season and previous yeah. seasons, but, but uh, right. no, they do. They do. Uh, it is split down the middle. Like uh, it's, if you, if you go to our website, Rutgers.rivals.com, we have the commitment list every year. We have the offer lists of every year for every recruit that's ever got a Rutgers offer. Um, you could see it. There's, there's, it's almost split down the middle basically. And they don't offer a ton of kids. They're one of the programs that says like, Hey, if we're going to offer you, it means something. And it, there's different strategies to it. Rutgers only sends out maybe 120, 100, 100 offers per year. Penn state sends out like 450. Like they'll just, they don't care. They'll just like send it all out. Sure. Eventually shit sticks. And <laughs> there you go. Hey, that kid likes us. Like, hey, come on, visit. Let's yeah. see if you're any good. Um, but yeah, so now they recruit both. And then, uh, the other question was not more of a statement, I guess. Rutgers needs to get on the phone with Chase Basantis tomorrow and talk about big money. Chase Basantis is probably not going to come to Rutgers unless you have like five, 600 K. He got 600 K from Texas A&M. I doubt he's going to leave because number one, the money's still there. Number two, if he does leave, he's going to get a bigger bag because he was a true freshman starting in the SEC. Rutgers isn't outbidding anyone for him. Like, unless, and this is what I keep saying Rutgers needs, or the fans need to support NIL. If you want a good quarterback, if you want a good offensive line, you want to go to football team, you need to donate to the NIL collectives. You need to throw some money towards the Knights Society, the Knights of the Raritan. And that's the only way you're going to be able to get better in today's day and age of college football and college athletics in general. Is there any particular reason why, say, uh, Rutgers as a university, why their donors wouldn't have, whether it's a numbers game or not, uh, or a financial numbers game or not, wouldn't have the numbers as, say, Texas A&M? Or is it just the donors of Texas A&M are that much more passionate and are that much more willing to do it? So well, there's there's a couple things. Southern football is a totally different animal. Um you just go the high school. There's high school stadiums bigger than the Rutgers Stadium. Yeah, like it's just that. Ten Texas is just it's Texas. It's yeah. a different animal. But they have a ton of oil tycoons, and like it's. I know people joke about it. They literally have a bunch of oil invested boosters that are willing to pay anything. They fired Jimbo Fisher, who's owed like what a hundred something mil over the next couple of years, and they just don't care. And then they yeah. just they but get a new one. Screw it. We'll find a new coach. He's not good enough. Give him three years. If he's not good, we'll pay another hundred something mil. Yeah, that then we're gonna go buy. Yeah, they're like top three in NIL. They just buy players. Like that's exactly yeah. how it works down there. And it goes to show you, buying players doesn't always work. But, that's right. Um, that's one of the issues. So, and then Rutgers, Rutgers just doesn't have donors in general. It, honestly, the Northeast is right where they're located. It's a professional sports area. You have the Jets, the Yankees, the Mets, the Giants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Every Philadelphia is this way an hour away. Everyone's just – it's too many pro sports teams in this area, so there's not enough support for college athletics, first off. Second off, people don't want to support a team that's not winning. Now that they're starting to get wins, you're, see, you're starting to see the crowds fill in more. Yeah. You're starting to see a little more getting support NIL-wise. Yeah. But they, when they were sucking, no one wants to go, sure. like, throw money at them. Yep. So it's uh, – and then on top of that, Rutgers is number two, the second lowest endowment in Big Ten, only behind the school that they played today. So okay. it's it, they need to get the students more involved and get them back to donating back to the university somehow. I don't know how you personally do that. I think it's one of the hardest things you can do to change that narrative about donating back, but you have to find a way. 
Well, again, winning does, uh, that's where it, literally where it starts. Uh, because yeah. then you, uh, all of a sudden, you start watching the games more, and then you start having an interest, and then all of a sudden, it's like, hey, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I believe in the coach. I believe in what they're doing. Now maybe I'll put my uh, money where my mouth is kind of thing and mm-hmm. where my heart is. So that's definitely, and like you said, because it is a professional area, that's what it's going to take. And I think they could get there. And I understand, look, it's not like this is Clemson where – uh, you're not, you don't need, and I'm not saying Clemson didn't need it, but uh, they could still win big time football and still be competitive more than Rutgers without getting transfers. But Rutgers, I think they could still, I think they could still do it as long as the, the way they have it set. Obviously, again, I think that the more they win, the more the, mo- the money will come. But because I'll just say it again, if they just had one player, a quarterback, it would just boost their talent overall that much better and the the progression that they need to take to become even a, a more of a winning program like they were when Shiano was here before, uh, it fast forwards. And I think then all of a sudden uh, people get more interested and so forth and so on. So they just – that's why it's so frustrating because you just know it. You just – you know they're close and they just got to get that quarterback. So, yeah, that's that's the big difference maker right now. But because I like the way Shiano uh, uh, builds the program and the way he does, like you said, there's a limited amount of uh, scholarships because of the, or, or, or invites because of the fact that he's looking also for a certain type of player. And he's just mm-hmm. not going to throw money at players because he doesn't want to have a, a program like Texas A&M. He doesn't want to have a, a bunch of four or five star guys there that don't want to buy in to what he's preaching. And that's I, I get that. I don't want to see four or five stars on the team either that are not going to play the this is a team, we're a family kind of thing because that's just going to disrupt that. And so I get what he's doing. But at some point, still, you, you got to have you got to have the quarterback. And that's that's the only thing that's going to ever make this team different and respectable enough in college football where we're not embarrassed to watch them week in and week out play uh, the way they played offensively again today. So, yeah, until they do that, it's it's going to be more of the same. This could have been, like I said, a seven, eight win team and it's a six win team and could have had the most big 10 wins in a single season in program history since joining in 2014. And now you're sitting here a uh, four game losing streak. Um, you're banged up pretty bad because you lost Wesley Bailey today. You lost Shaquan, Shaquan, yeah, Shaquan Loyal today. Oh, how, um, how long? I don't know. Neither neither came back in the game. Loyal Loyal might have been able to come back because it was late. I think it was third, fourth quarter, late third, early fourth around there. Okay. Um, he was replaced by Thomas Monqua, who in turn ended up getting a penalty. Um, <laughs> See, there it goes. Yeah. That's what so, happens. And then uh, Wesley Bailey, he got hurt on one of the plays on the sideline. I saw him go down, and he kind of like grabbed his leg. We saw Isaiah Washington grab his leg at one point and go to the sideline. So this team, on top of everything, is banged up going into this bowl game. Um Plus, if it is Georgia Tech, who's putting up hell of a fight right now, um, it might just be an ugly one too. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But the good news is, um, sounds like uh, there will be a night report pregame party outside of Yankee Stadium. We're working out the details, so we will get you back to you on all that. But it will be pretty cool. There'll be a bunch of drink specials. Uh, I don't know about food specials. Try just drink specials. So if, if you don't like to drink, don't come. If you do like to drink, hey. More power to you. Just get a little banged up before the game and uh, can hang out with me, and I'll, I'll tell you all the Shiano scoop I know. <laughs> well, how about, how about post-game? Will you be able to be live on post? Well, uh, I might know. just do it from the press box, to be honest. Okay, cool. Yeah, make That'll it be- easy. In the indoor, outdoor press box, that's going to be freezing cold. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, uh, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm not uh, – I, I remember those days. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the only it's it drives me nuts it's like the only stadium that has a press box that they just don't have a window so it's just open air it's like what no what are we doing like it's cold as hell i guess baseball summer fall whatever well, but still like, october yeah it could be cold well, they haven't Imagine been trying there. to broadcast a baseball game as slow as that sport is and it's cold and it's like 45 degrees or something like that at night oh, it's it's nuts today's game was long as hell and it was cold yeah it was long it was a long yeah. game today but all right, uh, so we are going to wrap up the regular season post game report here, and hopefully Mike will be able to join us because Mike was supposed to join us. He was a late scratch, um, 
which is uh, uh, again that that's hopefully would, would be a great way to end the season to have the three of us uh, together one more time. Um, you'll talk about the game more, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. on what Tuesday. Probably gonna aim for Tuesday just because uh, basketball is Monday versus St. Peter's, so we'll probably try to do like a duo recap. So then that way we really don't have to talk about this one too much. Good. We can talk about the basketball win. <laughs> so. And Mag is uh, close to coming back, right? December, we were told. Still December. Um, okay. Not sure when in December. Um, I was ideally the plan I heard was originally was to see if he could shake off some rust on Monday versus St. Peter's. Not looking optimistic right now. Obviously, could change, uh, but he's probably going to miss that. And it sounds like he's probably going to miss the Illinois game, which I think is December second. Then it's just a probably a guessing game after that. Um, they didn't really think it would go this far, but he's just not fully there yet. And as okay. soon as he gets there, he'll be a weapon for him. But until then, it's yeah. uh, work with what you got. Well, they are starting to uh, slowly come around, which is nice to see. Because after that first game, it uh, it was it was it was it was kind of scary for a little bit. It's like, uh oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't so. think there was gonna be, but then again, Princeton's a little bit better than everybody thought. Yeah, and, what is it, six now? Five now? Yeah, I think they've beaten everybody. Yeah, they beat some decent teams. And and didn't Bryant upset F FIU? FAU? FAU, FAU, FAU. Yeah. Right. The final four, and that, that's a Brian team with an interim head coach, mind you, too. So, very, very interesting. Yeah. So that's it's uh, it's nice to see the team seems to be coming around. So yeah, college, college basketball is weird. You can't really judge early season wins and losses. You just gotta just keep on moving on. Like they they lost to Princeton, but now look, Princeton six and zero. So, and that 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 could end up as a good loss. Yeah. By the time the season's so. over, sure is right now. And yeah. uh, how many more uh, before the comp? So there's only what a couple more before the Illinois. And d do they start Big Ten play and then it just moves on Big Ten play with Illinois? Yeah. So, no. So it's like weird. So it's non-conference, and then they sprinkle in like two Big Ten games early on. So like it's like St. Peter's, Illinois, and then right back to non-conference. Then it's okay. LIU, Mississippi State, and then I think they sneak. Uh, who is it? Then Stonehill. And then, oh, actually, they're only stinking one in this year. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's it's just a random Illinois game in December. Then okay. like four, one, two, three, four, four more non-conference, and then right to conference play. So it's, it's a big, I don't know, I don't know. Whoever's in charge of schedule making in the Big Ten, I feel bad for it because that man's got the hardest job in the world. Is everybody uh, dealing with that? Is everybody gonna have like their little one-off Big Ten? Yeah, game? it's. I I thought it was two off, but I could be wrong. Um, yeah, and then uh, actually they're playing at Wake Forest down in uh, – that's, that's down by you, isn't it, on uh, December 6th? In Carolina? Okay. Yep, yeah, down in Wake Forest. So how how is Wake Forest and Mississippi State so far this year? Mississippi State's ranked uh, pretty high, if I recall oh. correctly. Wake Forest lost to LSU in Utah and Georgia, so not too good. But I thought they were supposed to be better, Wake Forest. I guess not. Uh, I thought so too, but I think they lost some via the portal. I, I'd have to – do a little bit of a deep dive. Yeah, Mississippi State's ranked 25 right now. Okay, good. Um, and where's that game? Uh, Prudential Center, which is Prudential bizarre. Prudential Center. Yeah, the and New Jersey De why? Devils are – I don't know. It's. I think team, from what I was told, teams are kind of just afraid to play Rutgers at the rack. Jersey Mike's, whatever so you want to call it. So if they were to play him, it had to be somewhere so sort it's of like, neutral. Hey, yeah, we'll play him somewhere neutral. And then it kind of works for both teams in terms of uh, net rankings because if you play a neutral site – I think it the quad rankings go from like one to seventy five counts as a quad one win or loss. Oh, okay. So so it just looks better on your resume too. All right. Well either way, if you lose, if you win, it's still better. Better for a resume builder. Yeah, I, I, we need it. We need some uh uh positivity yeah. with this uh, basketball program and because uh, we haven't had anything positive uh football for the last month. And if you're a Rutgers slash Giant slash Jet fan, like you and I are, yeah, boy, has this is. been miserable. It is rough. It's not pretty. But at least uh, Rutgers is going to a ball. So that's it. So we're gonna get extra just... practices. Yeah, that's that's gonna be big. So and uh, we'll we'll have all kinds of coverage on the site of those practices. There you go. Um, do have to give a little shout out because we are running a special for Black Friday weekend. I guess you want to call it that. Into Cyber Monday, actually not into Cyber Monday till tomorrow. Uh, till tomorrow at midnight, you can sign up now for Rutgers Rivals for 75% off promo code RIVALS2023. 
Um, yeah, I mean, sign up today. We got all the recruit scoop, all the uh, commitments, all the other stuff. We have all the post game stuff. We have post game grades. We'll have recruit reactions. All ever will anything and everything Rutgers related under the sun will be on our website. So how and, much is uh, that then? It's seventy five percent off. I think it comes out to like twenty five dollars for the year. Wow! So yeah, can't so can't that? beat that. That's, uh, $2, it's like a hundred and dollars a month. $100, yeah, hundred hundred dollar value for twenty five dollars. So there you go. And and you get to listen to all my uh my BS too. So that's great. <laughs> well, look. If you bottom line is if you're a Rutgers fan and because uh, I know uh, the New Jersey paper, which I think is just ridiculous, how they uh, put everything in their subscription deal. Um, cause I, yeah. I, you know, I don't like when the newspapers do that. Uh, you know, it should be free to read that stuff, but you know, you guys have a business online rivals meaning, and, mm. uh, and if you're going to wind up getting the type of information that you, you get, which you obviously, uh, know any, know more about the basketball and football programs than anybody, uh, following them as much as you guys do. If you're a passionate fan, it's a no brainer. You have to have it. So. Yeah. I know. Uh, I know. I'd feel lost without it because, again, that's what I'm saying. What do you? What would you do? Rather pay? What is it? NJ.com, you know, or, or pay you guys? And I think the the, the especially with that seven five percent off, I'm assuming it's probably very similar. The amount of money I mean, you'd be spending. You're going to save a lot more if you do it with us than them because I think theirs is like nine or ten a month. So yeah, it equals out the same thing as ours. But we have a promo code for. 25% or 20, 75% off $25 for a year. Yeah. There we go. Got it right. <laughs> and, uh, there, so yeah. And then we're going to be back, uh, to, for the post game show, but I'll be paying close attention, uh, to everything that you guys are going to talk about between now and then, mm -hmm. uh, for the basketball team. And, uh, again, all the gossip, uh, for practices, uh, for the bowl game. Um, and then transfers, yeah. as we said, there's going to be, who knows, maybe we'll get some transfer news. They're they're already offering transfers, so again they're, they're getting right into it. They offered a tackle and a, a defensive tackle and an offensive tackle so far. So, and that's just the the beginning of it. So yep. we'll we'll wait and see. All right, uh, good talking to you uh, again, Richie, and um, can't wait to. <laughs> yeah, I I shouldn't say that. Can't wait, but. It's yeah, it'll be a fun bowl game. Yeah, it will be. We hope so. Um, and uh, we'll talk then. So, again, thanks to everybody that's, uh, uh, you know, not only uh, uh, the viewers who have sponsored the program, but all of uh, all the viewers who have uh, participated in the chat. Thanks for mm -hmm. uh, checking in with us once again. And we'll see you after the bowl game, uh, which is going to be when? Uh, December 28th. I think it's a Thursday at 2.15 p.m. So. Okay kind of a weird weird time for a game but uh so dinner time just, yeah they're just, they're just a 2 two fifteen. there's i guess they're just assuming everyone's off of work on that thursday so if you're not off of work you might as well get off of work and it's a come join season. us at, yeah come join us at the pregame party so they have all those uh mid mid in middle of the week uh bowl games at those weird in middle of the yeah. day, uh, middle of the day time so very bizarre we'll do the post game which should be about dinner time uh on the 28th and yep. uh happy uh thanksgiving to everybody out there and also i guess happy uh christmas too because we, we won't I, I, at least i will not uh, be on the channel until after christmas and uh we'll see you then so thanks a lot richie again and uh yep. i'll talk to you soon